I've been raised in the church. I have been confirmed at age 12. I have confessed Jesus as my Savior. And I meant it as much as I could mean it. I just didn't know all the totality of what it meant. Who does? Right? And so I had a time of struggle. And instead of returning to church to get answers, I turned to uh, philosophy. I turned to literature. I turned to the occult, sadly enough. I turned to agnosticism. I turned to atheism. And none of those had satisfaction for me. And then by the grace of God, I accidentally heard Billy Graham preaching a crusade on the TV. And I saw what God had done through Jesus by allowing him to die in my place on the cross that I might be forgiven for all eternity. And I gave my heart fully to Jesus at that time. Jesus would probably have honored my childhood confession, but I needed this for my realization that I was now serious about it. The amazing thing and another miracle in my, in my idea is I had, at that point, I had only uh, one year of college as an art major and uh, had been in the Navy four years as a photographer, but I really didn't have my, any Bible training or any training at all. And I did lay speaking for a year and a half. And, and so a year and a half after fully committing my life to Christ and following Jesus after I had been seeking and had seen what Jesus did for me, then I followed Jesus. A year and a half later, I began serving two churches part-time as pastor. What is wrong with the United Methodist Church? <laughs> that they would entrust that to 26-year-old me who knows nothing. But I had... It made me trust God every day, every time in the pulpit, every time I had to do anything. One time, while at that appointment, I was driving to uh, JMU where I was a student, and I saw uh, a fellow walking along the road hitchhiking. He had his back to me, but he had his thumb out. And whenever I see hitchhikers, I always say, Lord, please quicken my spirit within me if I am supposed to pick up this hitchhiker and give him a ride somewhere. And I felt that God wanted me to do that, so I pulled over. Well, when I pulled over, I recognized him as a young man from our church that I hadn't seen for a while because he he'd now started college. And he was also going to JMU, so he got in the car and we're riding along. And I've still got another 12 or 15 minutes to go. And, and he is clearly upset. And I said, are you okay? He said, no, I'm not okay. I am really angry. I'm angry at my parents. They know that I need this education. They know that I'm working as hard as I can to try to pay my way. And my car broke down and they won't fix it for me. So now I have to hitchhike to school. Well, I don't want to get in that discussion. That's their business. But... I kept listening and he said, I'm just tired of trying to trust God that I don't even know exists. How can I know God is real? Now, at that moment, it was like I was isolated in a little bubble. My head was kind of spinning around and I'm praying as I'm driving, trying to pay attention to what I'm doing, Lord. This is crucial. Please give me the words to say, I don't know what to tell this young man. I don't know what to tell him. He is seeking. He has just told me. He is seeking to know that you are real. Give me words to say to him. And then I opened my mouth and started talking. I'm telling you, folks, I believe in miracles. I didn't know what I was going to say, but here's what I said. I said to him, when you get home today, Go up on that hill behind your mom and dad's house. Shake your fist at God. Yell at God how mad you are and how unfair life is. And then dare him to show you he is real. And if you do that, I believe he will answer that. 
I had no faith that he would do this. 19 years old, why would he do that? As time went by, I, see, I started seeing him in church every Sunday again. Finally, he came to me and he said, I should tell you that I did what you said. And the most amazing thing happened. Coming down off that hill, still not convinced, I saw some buttercups. And I realized God made those buttercups. And then I saw beautiful trees with fall leaves on them. And I, I said, God made those colors. God made those trees. Everywhere I looked, I saw evidence of God. I looked at the sky. I saw beautiful clouds against a blue sky. And, and I thought, God made that. God is real. God is real. And every day since then, I have experienced that God is real. And my parents paid for my car to get fixed. And my job gave me a promotion. And I'm doing well in school. And guess what, Pastor Jim? I met a Baptist girl. I wanted to say, well, what's so great about that? But, you know, <laughs> he said, and she loves the Bible. And we get together and she's teaching me about the Bible. And she wants to come to church with me. And I want you folks to know that he and that white, that girl that he married are still in that Methodist church. They've raised their family there. They're very active in leadership there. Because he went up on a hill and dared God to prove that he was real. He was seeking. Then he saw. Then he followed. What do you need from God? What are you seeking from God? We have started the Acts 11, Acts 11, 15 ministry here, meeting in this beautiful theater in the Sipe Center, not because we just love theater seating instead of uncomfortable church pews, but because we know people are seeking and they're untrusting of established churches and buildings with steeples on them. Or they've had bad experiences with long established churches. And, and churches do tend to get kind of locked in their ways. I'm not being critical, that's just the way it is. So we're starting something new and fresh, but I think there's a reason why some of you will continue coming here because you're seeking for something. My prayer, the prayer of Stephen, our senior minister, the prayer of our Acts 1115 team, our prayer is that those of you who are seeking will see Jesus here, not because of us, but in spite of us. Not because of anything we do, but because we make it available to you to hear God's word in a new and much refreshing different venue. And our prayer is that you will follow. That doesn't mean necessarily that you come here by following, but that you follow Jesus in your life. If any one of you has need for prayer tonight, for any reason, you might want prayer to have Jesus become real in your life. You might want prayer for a loved one. You might want prayer for someone who's ill, for yourself who's ill. Stephen and I will be available at the front after the service. And you can just come up and pray with us. We don't do this when we make you raise your hand and stand and all that stuff, okay? If you want prayer, take the initiation and come up. And we will pray with you. No questions asked. Whatever you want us to pray for, we will pray with you. Because it's not us. It's God who will be listening. And God who will honor your request. The Lord bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that when we are seeking you, you are ready to be found. You are dropping clues and hints all the time. I'm right here beside you, you're saying. Open your spiritual eyes and see me is your invitation. 
Help us to do that, Lord. And when doubts assail us, and when fears arise, help us remember to trust in you and not in anything else but you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now we're going to um, have the service of Holy Communion, and then we'll have our candle lighting. And uh, we'll have two stations for Holy Communion. Stephen, you want to come up to help? And our helpers, come, please. Our servers. Here you go. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. Well, first of all, let me say, on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he met with his, his best friends, his disciples, his followers, knowing that they would be betraying him, knowing that they would desert him in his time of need, knowing that one of them would absolutely betray him with a kiss. But he loved them anyhow. It was the Passover and they shared together in a cedar, Seder meal in an upper room. And in that meal, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Eat this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And can you imagine being those disciples? Yes, he had taught them that he must die. Yes, he had taught them he was going away. Yes, he had taught them they didn't understand. How can this be your body, Jesus? <coughs> How can we do this in remembrance of you when you're right here? They would understand later. We understand later. And this bread is given for you and for me. For everyone who wants to experience Jesus deeper than they have before. Or to renew their faith in Jesus. I like the traditional service I grew up with that said, Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. After the meal, he took the fourth cup and blessed it. That was a traditional thing with the Seder meal. But he said something different. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do you hear that? For the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you will in remembrance of me. When we take this bread and drink from this cup, in this case, though, we'll be dipping the bread in the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he should return again. I want you to know that we have individual cups with a wafer and grape juice in it if you are concerned about communicable diseases from dipping bread in a common cup. Just ask. We also have gluten-free wafers, if that's what you prefer, just ask, and we'll give you a gluten-free wafer and a sealed cup so that you don't drip, drip, uh, dip the gluten-free wafer in the common cup. Just ask, 
and the servers will get that for you. Now, let us pray. Lord, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and on those who receive them, that together they may build up the body of Christ in faith and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, bless everyone who will participate. And bless those who are serving and those who will be playing the music. Okay, we're going to have two stations. And the ushers will direct you to those stations.